Today is the Solemnity of St. Joseph, and as you know, it is also the Year of St. Joseph, so in many ways, today's Solemnity is, is much greater. It's also a reminder that even though today is Friday, because it's a Solemnity, it's a day of feasting and indulgence, so our Lenten penances can be dispensed or certainly relaxed, so it's a day for us to, to rejoice, and we're very fortunate that St. Joseph is also the patron saint of Canada. He's also the patron saint of the Universal Church. So he has an extremely important role to play in our lives because we are Canadians and because we are Catholics. Now in today's Gospel reading, there was actually an option of, of different Gospel readings. I read the, the Gospel pertaining to how Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose Our Lady to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. And I recently gave a talk on St. Joseph, as some of you may know, and I spoke about this, and I was quite surprised that a lot of people didn't really understand what was really happening, what was going on in regards to St. Joseph. Some of the saints that speak about St. Joseph, they refer to this event as St. Joseph's Passion. In other words, it cost him great suffering because he had great love for Our Lady for the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he didn't want to harm her in any way. Now, some people, they, they thought um, wrongly that St. Joseph wanted to dismiss her because he suspected, suspected her of having been unfaithful to him, or at least that she conceived by means of another man, even though it may have been against her will. So this, this was the belief of some people, I guess, and if Joseph was truly a righteous man, then he would have automatically disgraced her or, or dismissed her, even publicly. So um, that's not the case. And, you know, at the time of our Lord, for the Jewish people, they would not marry anyone unless that woman was a virgin. So men would not marry a woman unless she, she was a virgin. So it would be extremely rare for, for a man to marry someone and especially if that Jewish man was a righteous man, and he certainly would not marry a woman who was pregnant with a child that was not his own. So what the spiritual commentators say is that the reason that Joseph wanted to dismiss Mary is because he, he knew that she was faithful, that she did not conceive by means of a man, but that something miraculous had happened in her. He doesn't quite understand the full significance of it, but it causes him great distress because here is Mary. He recognizes her holiness, her sanctity. He sees her evident goodness. He knows that, he, that she wasn't un, unfaithful to him. He, he, she, he knows that she was totally faithful, but he, he feels overwhelmed by this reality that she is the chosen instrument of God. And in his humility, he feels totally unworthy to be with this woman, to, to take her as, as his wife. In other words, you know, imagine if God was calling you to some very great task, and you would say, well, I'm not worthy of this task. You know, even in, in the book of Isaiah, at the beginning of the book of Isaiah, you know, God is calling Isaiah to be a prophet, but he says, no, no, I can't. I, I'm an unworthy man. I have unworthy lips. And an angel touches his lips and, and purifies him and gives him the ability to do what he needs to do. And so it is with Joseph. He feels totally unworthy for this task. But when he has this dream of the Holy Spirit revealing to him that she has conceived of the Holy Spirit, so do not be afraid to take her as your wife. So God is going to give him the grace. Now, from the perspective of God, the greatest treasure of God, if we think of all created things, is his divine son and the mother of his divine son, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So God is entrusting these two individuals to St. Joseph. And it's interesting if you think about that. So God entrusts his most valuable thing or possessions to individuals to St. 
Joseph. In recent times, Father Don Calloway, um, you know, he, his conversion story is extremely miraculous. Um, he was a drug addict, basically, and, and was totally uh, disobedient and, and, and just very, very willful, very, very far away from God. He had no training in the ways of God, no Christian upbringing or anything like that. But he has this miraculous conversion, and now he's, he's a priest, and this happened fairly recently. If you haven't seen his conversion story, I encourage you to look into it. But he um, wrote a book recently about consecration to St. Joseph. So he's promoting and encouraging consecration to St. Joseph. This is something we should do. In other words, God gives us the example. God entrusts the most precious things that he loves, the Blessed Virgin Mary and his divine son, to St. Joseph. And so we should do the same. And when we think of all the saints, of course, Our Lady is the greatest of all the saints. St. Joseph is the second greatest saint. And after that, it's just speculation on our part. But if you think of all the saints, the saint who is most like God the Father is St. Joseph. Why? Because God the Father wanted St. Joseph to be the kind of father that Christ, the human Christ, would need. So we see in St. Joseph these admirable qualities of what it means to be a good father and to be a good spouse. So he's the provider. He works very hard to support the family. He protects the Holy Family. He, he guides the Holy Family. And the Holy Family is the, is the, 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 the cell from which we, we get the, the church. So in other words, it's when we are baptized, we become brothers and sisters of Christ, which means we enter into the Holy Family. So St. Joseph becomes our spiritual father. Our Lady becomes our spiritual mother. And this is why St. Joseph is the patron saint of the church. You know, patron means kind of like potter, so the father. So he's kind of like the father of the church, looking over the church. Interestingly enough, when we think of the Holy Family, the holiest person in the Holy Family is, of course, our Lord, because he is God. And the next holiest person is Our Lady. So St. Joseph, even though he's extremely holy, if we were to look at these three individuals, he's the least holy of all of them. And yet he has authority over both of them. And he knows this. And so it causes him to be even more humble and to depend not so much on himself, but to depend upon God, which is also what, what we should do. But the significance of this is that St. Joseph has the ability to tell his son, Jesus, what to do. Jesus, I want you to do this. Jesus, I want you to do that. And Jesus, because he respects and honor his parents, is obedient to them. Now, yes, we have the account of the three days loss, and even there, our Lord was obedient. He didn't directly disobey his parents, but he was obeying his heavenly Father. And it mentions in that passage that he was obedient unto them. So once we understand that if Joseph, St. Joseph, asks our Lord to do anything, our Lord must do it because he has to obey his parent, the head of the family, St. Joseph. And knowing this ought to motivate us to ask St. Joseph to intercede on our behalf. St. Joseph, please ask Jesus to do this for me or to do that for me. So St. Joseph is an extremely great intercessor. St. Teresa of Avila promoted devotion to St. Joseph, and she wrote that out of all the saints, St. Joseph is the only one that whenever she asked him for anything, he would always deliver. In recent times here in Canada, in Quebec, St. André Bisset, as you know, thousands of miracles occurred during his lifetime. He attributed all of these miracles to St. Joseph. In other words, St. André Bisset had this tremendous faith and devotion to St. Joseph, knowing that whatever he asked him for, 
Saint Joseph would grant it. So it ought to motivate us more to have a great devotion to Saint Joseph and as I mentioned to actually consecrate ourselves to Saint Joseph. Now, when we consecrate ourselves to Saint Joseph it's not as if we're consecrating ourselves to him apart from God. So Saint Joseph leads us to God. Our Lady leads us to God. Consecration to Our Lady is something that had been promoted in the church for, for quite a few centuries now, but consecration to St. Joseph is something new, and I believe it is something very important. As we all know, St. Joseph is the patron saint of workers and, and many other things, but also the patron saint of the dying. So the tradition is that St. Joseph died before our Lord began his public ministry, and that he died in the presence of Our Lady and of our Lord, in the best company possible. And so they helped him to have a holy death. And because he is the patron saint of the dying, or in other words, the end of this life for individuals, some people are proposing that he is also the patron saint of the end of the world. So, in the same way that an individual dies and this world ceases to exist for them, so at the end of time, this world will cease to exist for all of us. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And it's interesting how devotion to St. Joseph is becoming more and more popular in our modern age. And of course, a lot of people recognize that the way the world is headed, and it's kind of like we seem to be getting closer and closer to the end times when there will be a massive falling away of the faithful. So we need St. Joseph, especially at this time. We need his manliness. We, we need his example of what it means to be truly a man, to protect the less fortunate, to, to protect women, to honor women, to treat them with the respect that they need and not to treat them as objects of, of pleasure and to defend innocent children, as, especially the most vulnerable, the unborn. So we need St. Joseph. He, he is the patron saint of the church, as I mentioned, of Canada. And so let us look to him. Let us entrust ourselves to him. Let us consecrate ourselves to him. And let us ask him to pray for our country. And, and hopefully the direction we are headed in will change. Please stand for the creed.